Let's cross live to London and catch up with former Foreign Minister Alexander Downer. Alexander, you've written about The Voice and why companies should keep their noses out of the debate. Yes, of course, companies can argue their own book and the public will understand that. So if it's a mining company worried about some new mining tax and it's against it, that's fair enough. But on the other hand, if it's a broader political issue, particularly one, I'd have to say, the most divisive issue I have seen in Australia in recent years, um, if it's an issue like that, then I think uh, the best advice I could give to corporates is keep right out of it. Some of your employees will be in favour of mm -hmm. the voice. Many of them will be opposed to the voice. So you're offending part of your, you know, what they like nowadays to call stakeholder group. Um, and secondly, yes. there are the customers to think about. Customers are partly for the voice and many of them are against it. This is a hugely divisive issue and any corporate that gets involved in it does runs the risk of damaging their brand. And there's that other stakeholder, the shareholders. They're the ones who own the company. They're the ones who the... Uh, the, the CEO should be focusing on increasing their, the value of their shareholding. And uh, I just can't see what good's going to come out of upsetting potentially half your customers, half your staff, half your shareholders. It's just going to damage the brand. And I think these companies don't realise the brand damage that comes with this activism. Um, and they're treating it like a competition to see who can be the most self-righteous and morally superior. But Alexander, do we really need to cop moral lectures from the big banks? Well, so here in the UK, there's been a fascinating case in point where a, a bank called Coots, which is the bank the King banks with and the Queen she banked with, mm. um, so it's a high rollers bank, um, has um, uh, expelled from its accounts Nigel Farage, who's a kind of, how best to put that, a kind of Pauline Hanson-style Oh, politician. now our audience know, knows Nigel Farage. He's a regular. Oh, okay. <laughs> our audience knows Nigel um, Farage. But that backfired, Alexander, because he fought back and now we've had the CEO I step know. down, we had the CEO of the parent company step down. It has gone pear-shaped, but only because Farage has a platform and he fought and he fought and fought uh, the average person, um, that if that happens to them, if they're debanked, they're not going to be that fortunate. Uh, but we've also seen banks, uh, Alexander, shun companies that invest in fossil fuels. But in the UK, there are now some that are rejecting businesses from defence companies, and ministers are warning that this represents a national security risk. Uh, well, I think Coots might be one of those banks, by the way, and the National Westminster Bank, which owns oh. Coots, um, <laughs> they uh, don't um, invest in oil and gas companies. Well, you know, given the percentage of energy um, coming from fossil fuels in the UK, it's a pretty foolhardy thing to do. Look, um, the moral mm -hmm. of this story from Coots isn't what you and I think, um, but ultimately, it's what the punters think. Um, and the moral of this story is that mm -hmm. Coots did themselves huge damage. They were advised to go down this yeah. sort of what you might call woke path. They were advised to do this by their sort of activists within the firm, by their um, mm -hmm. HR advisors and so on. And they're always telling the management to do this. Um, but the consequences of doing it have been huge. The CEO of Coots, who comes from Adelaide, by the way, he had to uh, resign. The CEO, you mentioned this, the CEO of the owning bank, the Nat West National Westminster Bank, she had to resign. It's been catastrophic for the bank, catastrophic reputationally mm -hmm. as well. And there's a lesson here for Australian corporates Yes, you've got HR advisors and you've got political consultants who are telling you you've got to get with the trend, be on the right side of history, all of these clichés. But if you alienate some of your employees and above all, if you alienate your customers, um, then um, it's not going to help you and it's not going to save you. I would say other than in areas that directly affect them, um, corporates would be best advised to keep 
right out of divisive political issues.